Next, youth participation of a different sort. A group of young actors shedding light on the plight of the displaced, matters of difference and the questions we should ask but don't. The displaced. To many, they are faceless victims. A tragic outcome of the military victory, but especially for those in Colombo, remote from the bustle of everyday life as it picks up after the war. In our final story this week, we hear from the director of Travelling Circus, a production marking the 10th anniversary of the Mind Adventures Theatre Company, which addresses the IDP issue with a fantastical mix of allegory, humour, satire and creative inspiration. Take a look. The story is quite simple. It's about a boy who speaks in numbers in a country that speaks in colour. So he's immediately different and uh, I guess disabled as a result. And the whole play is set in the island of short memories. And his village is called the small village of Fat Hopes. One day, obliterated, it's caught in the crossfire and the bombs fall and the whole village is destroyed and he finds himself in a camp for ignored, defeated people. And it's about life at the camp, um, and it's about the characters, the many, many characters you meet along the way. Family name? Three, two, two, six, one. Here, here, here. These are a joke, right? Now for the last time. Family name? Three, two, two, six, one, two, Don't three. waste my time. Disabled. Get lost. 58? D-I-S-A-B-L-E-D. Got it? Get out! Next! There's a mad uncle and his minor who kind of stirred things up a lot at the camp, which is run by an important auntie, and, you know, she runs things with an iron fist. There is a skeletal sort of narrative structure, but within that we have created characters, we have inserted songs, we have really built up a whole different story based on this skeleton that Mike wrote. Um, and it requires the actors and the dire director to collaborate a lot. It's a really challenging process. Yes, yes, but I have had very talented people to work with and they have worked really hard to bring these characters and this story to life. Now, when everybody's watching, I want them to see what happened to me. But with all due respect, sir, haven't you uh, destroyed this place which gave you shelter, it gave you food, it looked after your health, it gave you sanitation? Why would you destroy which was a place which was effectively your second home? What would you do with all those things if you're stuck in a black hole? Huh? But what about the other people here? Haven't you rendered them destitute? They were destitute anyway. Now, they are destitute and free! <laughs> I think the thing with theatre, the thing with any kind of art form is that it allows you to interpret a story from different angles. That's the one thing about any artistic form is that you are able to bring another perspective to something and that perspective may be something that no one had considered before. Um, and because it is an artistic form, you can be as abstract or direct as you want and still communicate that message. And so the boy 
the auntie and the cow went forth. Unfortunately, they went forth into a minefield and died. Play leaves you with a question of where do we go from here? Um, and actually one of the things we do is we try different endings and the one we finish the play is uh, the one that the entire cast wanted to see happen. You know, if you stay here, you'll stay an ignorant, disillusioned person. And then one day, the Civil War of Lies came to an abrupt end. The lies ran out before the bullets did. Citizens were asked for urgent suggestions to permanently resolve the differences between the warring parties. How about a game of handball? No, 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 no. I think we should establish a constituent assembly to resolve our differences. What is that? The play is, I have to say, we were very, very fortunate to have worked with writings by Mike Marcellamani, his prose is witty, it's wise, it really calls for people to look at this issue from another point of view, see how these two very different groups that both feel they have justifiable grievances can come together for the greater good of this country. Um, so it's a mixture, it's a mixture of things, you know, it's not a tragedy and it's not a comedy. It addresses everything in life in Sri Lanka right now. And I think for us, that is a starting point and we're only going to go forward. It was a tense match. But the warring party soon realized it didn't matter who won or lost. They were all on the same side. Oh. And so peace came to the island, and with peace came the search for a new prime minister, someone <coughs> who could see beyond colour. Okay. Ah.